the Now That We're a Family podcast. Well, Dr. Matt, this is round two. It's kind of unfortunate that that first conversation we recorded ended up not being post-worthy. That's, you know? It is super unfortunate. And it had nothing to do with anything you shared. In fact, that's what made it so frustrating was when I was interviewing you, I was thinking, boy, this is gold. This mm-hmm. is gold. And then the technology really on my end failed. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was my Comcast connection actually. Yeah. Actually I'm after taking, sure. <laughs> after taking responsibility for yeah. that, I remember that it was actually pretty much on your yeah, end. Yeah. 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 Your okay. Wi-Fi failed, failed both <laughs> of us. Uh, but you know, what's great is that we, we get to do this now in person. That's way better. W- way sure. better. Yeah. And I'm grateful you're taking some time out of your family trip here to Coeur d'Alene to record this. And you know, we were just talking before we started recording that just mindset around life in general, it's crazy how once you start thinking differently in one area of life as a Christian or just as, as a person, it does help you start flexing that muscle to think differently in other areas of life. Mm. And, you know, you're, you're a doctor, you're a naturopathic health professional, you get to walk with countless people through their journeys of health. Mm -hmm. And I think I've mentioned this before, you have been instrumental in my parents' health. You know, I've seen their health transformation and to be able to say that my mom and dad have been more vibrant in their most recent 10 years than their previous 10 years, you know, their health has been better overall wow. in their most recent 10 years that's awesome. than the previous 10 years. That's pretty cool to be able to say. Yeah, that's, that's huge. And, that's huge. and you are a huge part of that. I mean, praise be to God, obviously, but then God bringing you into their life and you just changing their whole perspective on health. I've seen their life change. And I'm just kind of curious as to what your general take is. You know, you're a Christian, you've got a family, you're, you're homeschooling your kiddos, you've got a great, you've got a marriage, you've got a great marriage here. And I'm, I'm curious when you think of a Christian and health, you're like, does a Christian have a responsibility or should a Christian consider their health to be something that's worthy to invest in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely try to stay away from shoulds because I think that always gets people just riled up and then we feel like we're just like doing something bad all the time. Okay. I'll, I'll say the should, the should, I'll say the should. Yeah. But I think that responsibility for sure. And that, uh, I'm thinking, you know, how my view is definitely how could a believer not feel responsibility? We are the temple of the Holy spirit. You know, I'm sure there's some theological thing out there would say, well, maybe it's, you know, this or that, but I think it's safe to say it's, it's us. Mm -hmm. It's, it's our, our human body. I don't know any other thing we have that we could say is, is that, yes. um, and you know, we're basically, we're ministering out of our body. Every, we're using our mind. We're using literally our physical, but you know, picking something up, caring from something for somebody, you know, uh, waking up in the morning and having a smile on our face. Cause we feel reasonable so we can help our kiddos out, help our wife out. All these things, you know, s- they basically come from the information we've given our body. Mm. So all the time, you know, I see patients, and it's like the simplest lifestyle endeavors, the simplest, basically, you know, food disciplines and which a lot of it comes out of ignorance. You know, we're just like going about life and the standard protocol, you know, like even Amer- in America, the food pyramid is not something I, you know, do with my family. It's not, that's not how we eat in my family. Cause you know, it's like, it's basically like flour and sweets and then we'll work up from there. There's, you know, a few other things. And at the top, maybe you have like, even actually, I think fruit and vegetables are, are the, are the not, they're not the top of the pyramid, but they're, but they're basically up towards the top of the pyramid, meaning yes. they're not like the foundation of what you would consume. Right. Whereas, whereas I would be pushing towards, yeah, let's, let's consume, you know, real whole foods. Let's start out with things that are not processed. And if we got to use processed stuff here and there, sure, whatever. But why don't we start out with real whole foods like meat, fruit, vegetables, nuts, seeds, beans, lentils, you know, that kind of whole grain, sprouted grains, oats, buckwheat, um, and move towards, you know, if we ha- were in situations, those things that might show up. Uh, and so I think the, the believer often thinks if you suggest, and this, I've done thousands of people I've talked to, you know, just like this that we do every day in my office, uh, how they, they, the believer thinks that if, you know, you're suggesting that, hey, donuts, probably not the best thing, or, you know, the soda pop's not the best thing, or, the smarty pants or whatever, the things that I used to consume like a, a madman as a kid, those aren't, those aren't going to get you where you want to get to. It, it often comes off as you're judging them and you're, you're, uh, you're saying they're wrong. Mm-hmm. And, and then there's like, you know, these, these blinders that go up, can't hear anything else you say. Uh, 
And so I, it's, it's definitely a, a weird thing. And I think that even more so is what should, use the word should there, but may, 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 may us want to consider more the whole food dynamics is there's not too many things you can suggest to a person or, I mean, I've, if you've ever been in a situation where you're eating better and it felt like people were like, what's up with you, Elisha? Yeah. Kind of what's up with, what's up with exactly. that? You're not going to have this. Come on, man. You're the oddball. What, what, yeah. What's, what's wrong with you, dude? Jeez. You're, you can't, I, you can't pass up on, you know, the cookies, grandma's, yeah. whatever she's, I mean, what's wrong with you, dude? Have you ever felt that way? Absolutely. Right. And it's like, what in the world is that? Like when was the last time somebody was like, Elisha, why did you pass up on that broccoli that you walked across? That was, you know, sitting on, sitting on the table yeah. with those carrots or there's just some really interesting, I'm not sure exactly where it came from, what the, what it is, but there's some interesting thing about if you say no, thank you dessert to dessert or, uh, even like alcohol. So many times patients are like, well, I have to, because this is what the people are doing there. Mm. Or when I meet this guy or I, um, for, uh, you know, the business meeting or whatever, I have to do that. I'm like, no, you actually don't have to do that. You get right. to do whatever you want to do. You do you want to, how do you want to feel? You're telling me you don't feel good when you drink alcohol, you drink that glass of wine, you don't feel good. Why, why would you feel like you have to do that to yourself? Right. It's like, I don't feel good. if I eat a, eat a donut. I remember, I mean, plenty of donuts growing up. So why would I feel like I got to, you know, consume this thing just to, you know, appease somebody else? Is that, does that make sense? To yeah, you? it does. I and it's a crazy, it. it's a crazy paradigm. And like I said, mindset perspective is everything. And even with everything that you kind of just said, I'm wondering as a Christian, if there's a hierarchy to establish, because you say, if there's this general um, maybe, maybe a, a general expectation that you're going to eat some things that are ultimately harmful to your functioning within this vessel that the Lord's given us. You know, and the mm. Bible does say the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells within us, you know, and he's talking about our physical body. And, and of course we we've, we've read, I think it's in, you know, Romans to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Well, mm. We can be spiritually minded in our physical bodies, right? right? In these new bodies. And, I, and it's not that we're we're not elevating this worldly life to a place of I, I, idolizing our physical bodies, saying mm -hmm. this is all that we have. If anything, we've got more motivation than the unbeliever to right. take care of. That's, this is all an unbeliever has, is so this true. physical body in this world. Mm -hmm. We say we've got so much more than this world in this physical body. We get to look forward to a new body, a new heaven, and a new earth. Mm -hmm. And with that in mind, we should steward these bodies for this short time with way more seriousness, right. way more, I guess, energy and conviction than the unbeliever because God's, he's created us for good works that he's before ordained mm. that we should walk in them within these physical bodies yep. here on earth. Yep. And it's even a different mindset of stewardship versus ownership, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. the unbeliever says, this is my body. Come on. This is my body, my choice. I can eat the donuts. I can drink whatever I want to drink. Mm -hmm. I can do whatever I want to do with my body. And so they think it's total ownership, right? And that even sounds kind of good sometimes because you got Jocko yeah, saying yeah. total. And you're thinking, yeah, I need to take ownership for the situation. But the Christian, it's actually not ownership. It's stewardship. Yeah. Saying this body's not my own. I've been bought at a price. Mm -hmm. Then what does it say from there? Glorify God, therefore, in your members, in your body. Yeah this physical body that we have. And so wrapping our mind around, okay, this isn't my body. This is God's body. He bought it. But then within that, some of the things that you said, is there a hierarchy? Because there are people, Christians, unchristians, that I would say are not willing to compromise on some health decisions at the detriment of maybe family relationships. Hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you, you think of the scenario of, uh, sleep's important, right? I'm sure you're an advocate of good sleep for sure. Yeah. Right. But as a father of, you know, a two year old or of a nursing baby, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to say to my two year old, Hey, go clean up your own throw up in your bed. I got to get my good night's sleep tonight. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's some sort of hierarchy here. <clears throat> How do you approach that as a Christian? Yeah. You're thinking that health is ultimate, but also I want to take care of the things I need to take care of in right. this world. Yeah. I think on uh, you know, just thinking about these, these babies, so women across, across the board live longer than guys and women are having babies. Generally speaking, I mean, hope we try to step up to the plate when it comes to nighttime and all that with the, with the little ones, but women take the brunt of it 
And so they're, it's like my wife right now, she's breastfeeding three month old and she's been breastfeeding for like, you know, almost 11 years straight here wow. <laughs> with our kiddos. Uh, but that's like all this, you know, energy output, lost sleep time. No, that's not present, but yet, uh, the likelihood of her, you know, essentially outliving me is, is great. Like she should get three more years than me. That's wow. kind of standard, mm -hmm. um, protocol. So, uh, I think there's basically, there's some level of grace. There's some level of, uh, um, like they do so many studies on sleep too, where it's like the, the people that don't go to sleep, like they could go to sleep right now, but yet they stay up watching Netflix. They, you know, they're perusing their phone, whatever, these kind of things. Like they are the ones that actually ends up in the, in the health itch, itch, issue situation versus the person's like, you know, they get six hours of sleep a night. Yeah, I would say, okay, that's probably not quite enough sleep. Ideally, you know, seven, eight kind of thing, but that's just how they roll. It's not like they're basically kind of wasting time, mm. which, mm. I mean, you can do stuff here and there. Sure. Um, but, uh, as a consistent way of living of like, I'm staying up till midnight watching shows or whatever. So I think there's, um, so much that comes down to, do you get to make a decision or not? And on your hierarchy thing, I think food is one thing that virtually 99.9% .9 of the time we get to make the decision we want to make. Yes. Nobody's going to like literally force food down our, our, our throat, uh, the sleep. Yeah. Here and there could be off, you know, even st life stressors. You just, sometimes you don't know what's about to go down and life intensity can ramp way up. Uh, or, you know, kid gets hurt or whatever. It's like, well, I, I would rather not feel that intensity right now, or maybe that level of kind of angst that I'm feeling right now, or my, my adrenaline's going like, crazy. I would rather not be feeling that, um, for an extended period of time. But you know, that's just the situation that life's brought us. Or maybe you're like, geez, I lost my job. I got to like work. I got to put more hours in. I got to make, we got to make, make more, you know, inflation or whatever. I got to, I'm going to put a few extra hours in. So that keeps me up a little bit kind of thing. Yeah. Some of those things you can't control. So you got to say, okay, that that's, that's there. I'm not going to be, which a lot of people get freaked out about it. You know, they've read the books. Oh my goodness. Listen to the podcast. Sleep's so valuable. Uh, you know, drinking your water. And I only drink, you know, 40 ounces. I'm supposed to drink 80 ounces a day. Oh my goodness. Like I'm just getting stressed out or I sh can't be stressed. Right. Elisha. I cannot be stressed. If I get stressed, that's bad for my health. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna have a heart attack. I'm gonna, all this kind of stuff. And that's like creating more stress and, and everything. I mean, it just keeps going down the road, yes. down the road or it's like, you know, I talk about hey, oxytocin, so valuable, hug your kids, hug your wife, hug, you know, whole, you know, whole hug a dog, you know, any of these things like produce oxytocin. And it's like, oh my goodness, you know, like I'm single. So I'm not like getting hugged all the time. Like the, what, 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 what am I going to do? I mean that, unfortunately that just see people all the time where this is just like raging in their mind and they're just like building up this inferno. So the thing is hierarchy wise, like, Hey, we can start out with, you know, uh, the food input. It's like, can we make breakfast happen? Hmm. Let's just make it. Let's just, let's make breakfast happen. I know it's, it's easier said than done when you've been into certain habits and routines. But if we start with those, you know, lowest hanging fruit, like grab a couple lowest hanging fruit, things that are just so easy, so seemingly simple. And that's like, are they're meaningless basically, hmm. but yet over the long run, you know, if you eat three meals a day, Okay, you got 90 meals a month, whatever 90 times 12 is, it's, it's a lot, it's a thousand meals yes, basically. Yes. That's, that's a thousand inputs. And most of you are eating more than three times a day, right? Yes. Those, that number of inputs is just insane. And we just do not give the uh, um, essentially a level of, wow. Yeah, that credence. Could, that could credence, yeah, yeah. Two, like, whoa, that's all information going in. Just like the Advil, just like the Tylenol, just like, you know, you're going for a walk. You know, that's all information coming in my being that one thing I control that, that food part, it is probably the most challenging thing seemingly to control mm. because it is kind of on us. Yes. It's like, shoot, th this is on me <laughs> to, to, to take care of this business right here. Right. Uh, but if we do, man, I mean, this sounds crazy, but I mean, I've seen patients where they, uh, literally they got their food under control, you know, three, six months of like, man, they're crushing it. Like, and they, and it's not like they're eating this perfect lifestyle, but they are actually in control of their decisions. And there's this new sense of confidence they have like, well, like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to now, I'm going to go over to CrossFit now. Cause like, I think I can do this. It's not like they lost 70 pounds and now they feel like, oh, that. it's like, no, they're in control before there's no way they go over there. Cause they yes. just have the confidence or there's, I had this one patient, even they, they just like, they were talking about forever coming in year after year. Like, I got to quit my job. I got to quit my job. I hate my job. I don't like the job. Finally get their food under control. They literally say, you know what? 
I went in, I said, I'm done. And I'm going, you know, doing this other thing now. Cause they, that there's just crazy. There's even some professional athletes talk about how once they got their food under control, how it was like, Whoa, it opened up all this other stuff to them. Hmm. Just that confidence of knowing that inanimate object that is the, whatever it, whatever it is for the person, it's the ice cream, it's the chocolate mill, you know, whatever it is that, that gets in their way, uh, that they actually can decide whether or not they're going to, going to consume it or they're going to pass on it. Yes. It's, it's a, it's potent. Wow. Hey everyone, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about our online music academy called VoteBergMusicAcademy.com. Katie and I actually started this online music academy seven years ago, and over that time we've been able to see thousands of students go through our courses and learn how to play the guitar, the mandolin, the fiddle, the piano, the ukulele, and bring music into their home. And we really curated these lessons so that you're able to learn with your child or you're able to learn by yourself and then bring music into your home and play with with your kiddos. We even have it so that you can, you know, subscribe to one course and have three of your kids take the same course. So it's really cost effective and you're able to go at your own pace and bring music into your home. Go to VoperMusicAcademy.com and check this out. Okay, listen up. This is where it gets really good. If you enter the coupon code YouTube at checkout, you will get 10% off each month's payment because it's a subscription. It's a reoccurring payment. So if you put that code in, then it's 10% off each month. So, I mean, that can really add up over time. So bring some music into your family's home. Go over to VoperMusicAcademy.com. I'll link it below. And you guys put in that coupon code and go learn how to play some piano, guitar, fiddle, mandolin, ukulele, your choice. Wow, that's crazy to think about the confidence that can come from that. And I think something that Growing up, I, I heard, and maybe I will still hear this in various um, Christian uh, groups or, or communities, is this whole concept, you know, we're spiritual beings. And I even think of, um, I think it's in one of the Gospels that, you know, it's not what enters into a man that defiles him, but what comes from his heart. You know, but then I also think of, comes was that right? Yeah, it comes out of him. Yeah, what comes, comes out of him. Yeah, exactly, him. exactly. Um, and so in, in a lot of ways, using that to kind of be like, hey, it doesn't matter. Right. Like mm -hmm, it doesn't, mm -hmm. you can eat, just get the calories, stay, stay, um, stay alive, get enough calories to keep you moving forward. And it's an issue of the heart, you know, which of course, as Christians, like we do see that, totally. like it is a huge heart issue, mm -hmm. but if your heart's going to be changed and like you said, you have this mindset of submission and surrender and I guess, um, like servant servanthood to the Lord and he gets to dictate what you do with your body. That should start to have implications through things like your diet, you know, mm -hmm. through things like how you do, are you exercising your body, what you're putting into your mind. And I think of all the verses that talk about our mind that, you know, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind or, mm -hmm. or you know, it's Romans and you got <clears throat> Colossians too, is it set your mind on things above, not on things of this earth for yeah. your life, for you died and your life is hid with Christ for yeah, well, Christ on high. Um, or even think it's Philippians four, you know, whatsoever things are true and lovely and of good report, if there be any praise, if there be any virtue, think on these things. Mm. So we get to, we're told that what we think about, it matters big time. Yeah. Right. And, and, and if anything, what we think about then goes to our heart mm. and changes, changes our heart. And it's nuts that just like when you take control of what you're putting into your body from a caloric standpoint and from nutrition, it's the same thing with their mind, what we're choosing to dwell on, what we're choosing to think on. And then you start realizing, okay, I can choose to think differently about food and then that's going to affect my actions. And the ramifications are far more than just the food, mm -hmm. like what you talked about. It's this ability to say, wow, I actually, I mean, what's, is self-control something that Christians should be known for? You know, it no, seems for like, sure, for sure. seems like it's a fruit of, of the spirit that dwells within us. Yeah, you know, we're yeah. told that that's the thing. And so to be able to say no to the the thing that you know is harmful to your well being, mm. the the donut or the chocolate milk or the whatever the beer, whatever it is, and <clears throat> you're able to do that, you think, oh man, that's right. As a Christian, I can say no to that and do something that's far more edifying that's good. Yeah. for 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 my body. Now, with that, uh, as you talk through these things and you and you kind of say a bunch of, it, it can become overwhelming, right? Because sure, because right? sure. mm -hmm. I think of. Even where Katie and I are at, we're still in the journey. But I think of five years ago, and if you don't measure backwards and acknowledge progress, there's it's really discouraging, you know. <laughs> totally. But I like being able to measure backwards and say, you know, we've actually made huge progress mm -hmm. in our grocery, you know, grocery shopping, you know, yeah. in our everyday meals and our overall lifestyle. Do you think something that holds people back is a false understanding of what health is? Because when you 
I think first and foremost, when people think of health or they think of fitness, they can't help but think of the vi- what does your body look like? Totally. You know, the whole you know, body image. Mm-hmm. And do you think there's some damaging perspectives that people have when it comes to what does a healthy person look like? Right. And, and, and therefore, people only caring about weight, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. As though weight is the only indicator right. <laughs> of health totally. or muscle mm-hmm. or whatever. Is that something that you find? Oh yeah. All the time. I, I mean, yeah, I think that's, uh, I'll, you know, just like this lady, the other day, I was like, listen, you got to get rid of that scale. Who cares what this you're literally basing your life on when you wake up in the morning, getting on that scale and what it says. And that literally is setting your entire day for you. This is, this is insanity. Uh, cause yeah, I mean, the, the thing is the scale can do nothing for you, right? It's just a number, an objective number. I'm not saying it has, it doesn't have some validity and okay. If you want to be a wrestler or something, or you're, you know, having some sport where gymnastics or something, maybe, maybe it'll be a little something there, but, uh, yeah, I think if we can, we can set our mind on the idea of health, vitality, vigor, like, how do I want to feel? How do I want to show up in life? How do I want, which I think that's the thing, you know, if you if you know you're in control of your inputs, like you go, go exercise. Do you feel, man, I feel bad. I can't believe I did that today. What yeah. was I thinking? Guilty. Jeez, that yeah, exercise. No, Ugh. no, it's like, you feel, man, like I already, I'm already ahead of the game yes. when I've got my exercise in. It was, I mean, it sounds odd. It might sound crazy to some people, but it's like, if I, if, if it was a rough day as a whole, I feel like, man, I just, just didn't get any momentum. Uh, maybe it's like Friday and I don't usually see patients on Fridays. And so it can kind of feel like the day isn't quite as like, bam, I accomplished a bunch of stuff. It's just like paperwork. And then, you know, I love hanging out with my kids, but you know, there's just not that sense of accomplishment there. Mm. But it's like, if I got my workout in, it's like, bam, yeah, we, it was a good, it was a good day. Or it's, it just feels like you started something, you finished something. Yes. Which is such high value for a human being. Um, so the, uh, can you, well, I should run back. So we, what were we looking for right here? I well, I'm just sure. thinking about, uh, yeah, that's kind of like nail that down that sure, weight but. thing, you know, and that overall body image, your appearance and something that actually kind of, I didn't know this. Katie just told me this like four or five days ago. And I thought it was such a cool insight. You talk about thinking differently as a parent. You think I want different results for my kids than what's average. And she just told me, um, I didn't know about this. So she grew up with a, she was one of eight girls, right. in their family. And her mom decided early on when she had all these daughters, she's like, we're not going to have a scale in our house. Awesome. Yeah. She didn't want it at all. She mm-hmm. didn't because she just saw how that could mess with so many um, young girls psyche mm-hmm. around body image. And their goal was to pursue just health, a, vi- yeah. a, vi- a life full of vitality and health and energy and vigor, mm-hmm. like you said. And so do you, what are ways that you can kind of communicate that? Because a lot of times, obviously weight is a byproduct of unhealthy living. And so you can look at Mm -hmm. it and say, okay, we Mm got to work, go back upstream see like what, what got us here, but it's not the ultimate indicator Mm -hmm. of a healthy life. Are there other more, I guess, big picture indicators indicators that you can look at? Yeah. I think that's where, uh, definitely the fitness part comes in, but just to backtrack though, I would say, cause there's people that are, uh, skinny fat. You would say, you probably heard that, that lingo before. So they, and they used, they can still get diabetes mm-hmm. and I see it all the time. They could still, you know, arthritis. Uh, and, and we think that, you know, if they're okay, cool. Their, their body composition looks a certain way, but it's like, sorry, ma'am. Sorry, sir. If this information is what's going into you, if there's not life information coming into your being, you know, if they're not, re- if you're not reading the Bible, if you're not praying, if you're not, you don't have that, inf- that life giving source coming into you from a spiritual standpoint, probably not going to succeed. Right. Mm-hmm. And you can't expect long-term success in your life yes. uh, or, or reaching your highest peak. Same thing goes if, if the food information coming into you, which is where you kind of have to like convince a human being that what you see marketed to you, the pretty pictures on the boxes, the colorfulness, that isn't actual real. That that's, you know, it's these really intelligent human beings getting paid millions of dollars a year to make sure you consume that and you think it's good for you mm. and you will continue to consume it because mm-hmm. you can't just eat, eat one, right? Yeah. I mean, there's actual commercials that we're seeing. You can't yes. just eat one. Yeah. Yeah. It's just insanity that, yeah. <laughs> that this is even out there. But if we can get ourselves or, or those around us to think about how can I just make my being most effective at the life I want to live. Hmm. You know, people will talk about, Hey, how do you want your next five years, 10 years, 20 years to look? Rarely 
do he, that's like usually finances, right? Mm -hmm. Family set up house, sure. car, career, yeah. vacation, rental, whatever. Yeah. Rarely do people ever look at their body and think, you know what, when I'm 45, do I want to just be able to wake up in the morning go to do a full day work, come home, hang out with my kids and feel great? Do I want to, you know, at 55, maybe I got a couple grandkids coming and, you know, f feel fantastic and, and not have a, uh, you know, like my hip, I'm, I got to be in hip replacement, you know, yes. because, uh, uh, you know, not cause of that tr life trauma, but because of, you know, putting in say inflammatory things over and over again, being really sedentary, uh, and my, my, my joints and tissues are breaking down or, uh, do I want to be like, do you and kids. Yeah. Let's, let's go skiing today. Yeah. Let's, uh, we're, we're going, we're going for a hike throw, I'll throw the grandkids on my back, my back and, and go for it. That is not the end all in life, right? True. At all. But, um, it's going to make your, your ministry of life so much more amazing. Yeah. I mean, my, my grandparents have, and I wouldn't say they had, uh, I think, you know, all these amazing habits, uh, but activity was definitely something they were always very, very active, which activity can make up for a lot of things. Yes. Uh, but I mean, it's like my grandpa was like 70. So I remember playing basketball with him, like yes. up at Thorbex. He's playing wow. that. This is crazy. Yeah. Uh, and that is like ministered to me as a, as a young guy, like, right. whoa, this is pretty awesome. Yep. And it, it sounds so simple. Like I'm more likely to listen to him because I see him out doing stuff then or working in the yard or even you know, my dad like being productive mm. and not just like hey, i'm watch i'm watching tv at night i did my job and watch tv at night no like i did finish work i'm gonna go head to the gym or i'm gonna you know go out go in the yard and do all this stuff and, and i can do it like that 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 like i want to i want more of that yeah like I'm, I'm like whoa that's crazy that's, that's different yes and you've if you run into people that aren't on that side of things a lot of them one don't realize maybe they could have been on that side of things sure but it's almost like they, they've kind of given in. Like, I'm, I'm just gonna, because what we do now is what we're, what we're, we're gonna bear that fruit later on, right? Yes. And so you can, you can be thinking, ah, geez, turn 58, 59, 60, time just like hit the recliner, watch the kids run around, and just like sell off. Yes. And not, not much. It's like, no, actually, it doesn't have to be that way at all. Yeah. You can't 60 and be feeling like, this is sweet. I had a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. I, I got a little, little, you know, extra finances. Now I can do some things. Yeah. We could take these kids somewhere. We could, exactly. we could do some things like I can, go, I can, I can yeah. go rafting with you now. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm still good to go. Like, and I don't have to feel like maybe the pressure I felt before of raising all my kids right. of, you know, I got to take care of everything. Now it's like, man, I get to really enjoy yes. the fact that I raised my, raised my kids well. And, um, I got a little extra money in the bank and my body still feels fantastic right. just because of all these little itsy bitsy, seemingly nothings I made over the years. Yeah. And when you talk about weight, it's like, who cared? Yes. Are you, are you, are you thinking, man, I'm glad I weighed myself for the last right. 30 years <laughs> right. and maintain that, you know, 135 or one, you know, yes. 182. It's like, no, cause if you keep weighing yourself, sure. You might weigh you're 20 years old. And you weigh 135, say for a girl. And, um, and now you're six years old and you weigh 135. Well, that 135 is not getting you where you want to get. I mean, that's, that's not muscle tissue anymore. Right. You've lost bone structure. So unfortunately, you know, that's, if you were to look at a, a you know, a chop in an at some anatomy of it, you're like, sheesh, you know, a lot of that's just like fatty tissue. Right. Unless you've been proactively accumulating health and doing things to support vitality, vigor, you know, that, that healthy lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. I love, I mean, you just said there at the end, accumulating health and that's kind of a tagline that you've, you've coined and it makes so much, like, I love that it sticks with you, you know, cause mm -hmm. we've all heard the lessons on how to accumulate wealth. And that's usually talking about financial wealth and only that totally. Uh, but when you think about accumulating health, that is something that I never thought of prior. I think to talk, talking to you or hearing mm. from you that no, what you're doing now, there's actually, there's a, there could be a compound effect totally. that really starts taking place. You mentioned your family, your dad. Um, I know your dad. I mean, that guy, you know, he's kind of a legend, you know, like, and it'd be easy, I think to, to even look at your family, you know, people talk about genetics all the time. Mm. They say, Oh man, well just genetically, this is where I'm at. This is genetically where mm. they're at. Oh, sure. And, um, yeah, before I guess kind of ask this question, I'll, I'll state like your dad is kind of, you know, you could say like, what a freak of nature, you mm -hmm. know, like he's been to what the CrossFit games, like mm -hmm. four times or something, five right. times. And you say, well, easy for you to say, Matt, like, sure. look at your lineage, look at where you're coming from. And yet you see people with all sorts of genetic makeup, mm -hmm. right? You, you see across, across the board, are there different ways we could think about our genetic makeup that are helpful? Or do you think there's lies out there? that kind of tell us, Hey, this is what it is Yeah. because 
of your genetic makeup Mm -hmm. because those are things that I've always heard as being, well, that's, that is what it is. Right. Right. Like what? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Lifestyle is not going to change that. Totally. What can you speak to that at all? hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, this is definitely, it's definitely a lie from, from, from hell, um, that, that people get caught up in. And I mean, just literally it's like handcuffs them for life hmm. thinking this, this is, this is me. Um, and I think the thing that people want to consider is that really gene wise, I mean, it's very teeny. It might be two, 3%. Like sure. you got your DNA from your parents, but really how that DNA is going to manifest that those genes are going to manifest. Like they're literally turning on and off with every single meal. You have mm. genes turning on, turning off, turning off. So if it's McDonald's, you know, every, every day, well, yeah, they're going to have these genes that are inflammatory, that are, I mean, problematic for you are going to keep on turning on and that's going to send you down an undesirable road. But just because your parents, you know, your dad has diabetes or, you know, there's Alzheimer's dementia, whatever it is. It's like, well, if you live a different lifestyle, you will turn on different, different genes in your being. These are functional genes and you can get to a different space. Mm. It's totally feasible. The problem is, is that genes and, and our, our end goal isn't so much what's passed down. That, that's very small. It's the patterns. You know, we pass down patterns to our kids. You know, you'll our priority see now, like, man, I walk like my dad walks. Yes. It's like, how is that? Because right. I saw my dad walk and they've even done this with adopted children. Finding like, geez, like they will walk as their parent walk. Not because these aren't biological parents. It's like, no, that it, I'm, I'm emulating completely subconsciously. I'm, I'm following that pattern. And so we want to be, which I think that's the thing with, you know, talk about your wife and mentioning, uh, uh, the whole scale thing for your kids. It's like, yeah, if, if you see your mom getting on the scale every day, it's like, what's, what's the, the girl supposed to be thinking? Exactly. That's, well, that's what she's going to do. She doesn't even know she's three years old and she's hopping on the scale. How much I weigh kind of thing. And it just, it sets you up to these patterns and these mindsets that are literally driving the course of their life, unfortunately. Wow. And so I think, uh, it's so much more, and this is, it's just, it's crazy, but yeah, I mean, cause I see generations of, of families and you know, the, the, the daughter might be 45 or the, the, the boy 35 and, and the parents are, you know, in, in their seventies. And it's literally like they have the exact same things they do, same thinking patterns they get stuck in that are leading them down the unfortunate health that they're coming to my office try, trying to get out of. Hmm. And it's like, wow, it's not, it's not the genes. It is not your genes. It's the, it's the patterns that have been come down generation after generation. And we just, we stay in them. That's where I think it is high value. We're talking about going to, you went to Florida and you're like, oh, things are a little different in Florida health wise or how people think, think about things. It's like, yeah, it isn't, is it wild? Those are just literally patterns. Those aren't genes mm. that a bunch of people have that are doing one thing versus another thing. Those are patterns and habits and co- kind of little, little cultural things that we would say are cultural now, but literally just a pattern somebody set up at some point. Uh, and people just kind of kept on, you know, falling in line with that. And us as parents, you know, we are the biggest pattern setters for our kids, hopefully, especially for homeschooling our kids. And we're like, geez, they just see us all day long. Yes. Uh, and so we have the potential, especially if we had issues growing up with food or body image, we want to go just to end, <laughs> endless levels. Cause we know how much torment we were under for that kind of stuff. If you've ever experienced that to, uh, and I know how much energy it took me to get out of my just sugar addiction. It's like, even to this day, it's like, I, I'm think I'm thinking, okay, like, I have some conscious activities. Like, I'm not going to, I don't want to do that versus like not even thinking twice about it. It's like, there's some conscious action where I'm like, I'm not going to do that. Or I'm not, I'm not going to have that in my house because I know like some point at eight, eight o'clock at night or nine o'clock at night, I'm like, I'm going to go grab that ice cream and down it. Yes. Uh, and so it's like, we'll start in my house. And some people like my wife, my mom, it's like, they'll like nibble on those little like chocolate bar for yes. four months. Exactly. Like, unfortunately that's not my capacity. And so it's just, it can't, it can't be present. So for my own children, I try to make a point of, you know, okay, we're just going to keep it out. I just don't want, I don't want them to have to, uh, I mean, they're, they got, get out. So it's like, they're going to see things and everything. But, uh, when it comes to food, I want to make it as easy as possible. So I'm not, you know, some people say, Hey, you got to give them a little of this, give them a little of that. So they can, you know, kind of see mm-hmm. how it is and, you know, uh, and teach them or whatever it's like teaching. It's like, no, it's like, I'm not going to put pornography in front of them. Yes. I'm not going to put, you know, candy in front of them and say, Hey, somebody created this for complete indulgence so that you would have to consume it more, yes. which is like pornography, the same thing, you know, it's yes. like this dopamine over override, right. completely overriding any natural, you know, sweet hmm. capacity of our being. 
I was like, no, I'm, I'm not going to put that in front of them. I'm going I'm to keep it away from them as long as possible so that, you know, maybe by the time they're 24 and they have some executive function that's stuck in there, they, they can literally, you know, make a decision about do I want to do this or not? Wow. So that's crazy. And I mean, I think of so many things as parents that we've got this crazy opportunity and you could say responsibility Mm. to develop our children's appetite, not just with food and nutrition, Mm. but we get to, we get to create their appetite with information, you know, what they're reading, what they're thinking about, what they're consuming with, with media, um, the people that they're around, what they like to do for their activities and their overall lifestyle. And that actually, I, I wish I could say that I was willing to buy into a more holistic perspective on lifestyle prior to having children. But I really wasn't it it, for me. It took, I think seeing my kids eat the same thing that I ate (laughs) then want to do the same thing that I want to do, whether that was sit down in the afternoon and watch a game or Mm -hmm. just lounge. And, um, and I started realizing, oh boy, they, this is creating their appetite. (laughs) Their, their, their perspective on everything is being shaped right now. And that really convicted me. And I thought, what an opportunity for them to be able to, and you talk about appetites. It's funny because, you know, going into marriage, we've talked about this a bunch. So I'll say it, but whatever, I'll say it again on our honeymoon, uh, Katie and I, we went to get a treat, you know, down like at the resort, little, you know, gift shop or whatever. We got a bag of Skittles, like the normal size Uh Skittles. (laughs) And, uh, we like opened it up and like Katie gave me three and she took three and she like put the bag away. And I was like, what, like, where are you putting that? You know? And, and that was her expectation. You know, she's like, that's how she grew up. I was like, Hey, you just eat a couple Skittles and Mm -hmm. you put the bag bag away. And whatever for me, it's like, whatever was available was, was going to be put away that night. (laughs) You know, I was going to make sure it was gone. Totally. Um, and in my kids, it's so funny to see the same thing where they, if they get a treat, like, you know, you do, we do the smart sweets sometimes uh-huh. they'll get like one of those, you know, red fish from smart sweets and they'll enjoy that for like four hours. Wow. You know, they're just sitting there like enjoying it. Mm. And again, it's just kind of a funny thing that you can see that these things are patterns. Yeah. They really are things that are not, it's not genetic mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. you have to just pound the Skittles. Yep. You know, when you get them, totally. like that's, that's something that I adopted. That's something that I developed in myself. And it's cool that you can undo some of those things over time. Mm-hmm. You can change your appetite over time, but what an opportunity with young children to really actually start from ground zero and be like, Hey, yeah. let's, let's actually create some lifestyles and some appetites mm-hmm. that are going to serve you in life so that your, totally. your instincts are not, you know, fast food and your instincts mm-hmm. are not, let's stay up late. Yeah. And, and, and watch Netflix. But the instincts are, man, I want to get good sleep. I want to eat a healthy breakfast. Yeah. I want to be active when I'm done with work. I want to go for a walk, or mm-hmm. go for a hike. Mm-hmm. And we can do that for our children. hundred percent. You know, we can actually create that and start and start a whole new line of that. Um, when, when you guys are, you know, you're building a family and it's interesting now as you're, you're serving families in the community, you guys are a, a, just a kind of this pillar of stability and of life to our, the local community there. Then you've also got your kiddos. You just had your seventh child, mm-hmm. you know, and, and how long have you and Alma been married? Uh, coming on 14, 14 years. Okay. So yeah. 14 years of marriage, you've got seven kiddos. What is, how has this been, you know, cause your careers in a lot of ways kind of paralleled your family development too, right? Yep. Like, I mean, you started, when did you graduate from best year? Uh, 2009, nine, I got my medical license, September 29th, 2009. Okay. And then when did you have your first kiddo? First kiddo, 2012. Okay. So shortly after. You got married 2010. Okay. Wow. 2010. Wow. And then you started the whole family thing. Has that shifted your parenting at all? I mean, it's like, you've probably grown, you know, as a parent and as a health professional kind of at the same time, but is there like crossover? Do you feel like, oh, this is, you can't just like put your professional hat on and then take it off when you go home. Do you kind of see it affecting everything in your life as a parent, as you know, a husband, is this something that crosses over into different areas of your life when it comes to thinking unconventionally with health? The, um, so you're saying since I'm I'm a naturopathic provider versus a a standard provider and does that, that affect? Yes. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, it makes, um, how would you say that? I mean, it definitely, I was, I feel like I was always kind of unconventional thinking. Okay. Or not, not, I mean, generally I didn't know anything about medicine, so sure. I definitely wasn't that, that way. Uh, but I think as it came down to just people I was around, I mean, literally we were around say our family, like having a few extra kids, why would we have a few extra kids or why would we have a home birth? These are, un, you know, not, weren't, they became more, more and more 
in my community, they're coming more and more. Yeah. Our communities are who we hang around more normal, but still they're super weird. Yes. Generally speaking. And it literally was a, a couple of patients. They had had a home birth. They had a couple of kids. They're like, this is awesome kind of thing. I was like, geez. And the other thing is they were super fit. It's like, yeah. geez, these guys are crazy fit. Wow. <laughs> uh, a couple of firefighters and they love the Lord and just like raising their kids. Awesome. They bring their kids in their office and the kids are just sitting there like chilling, like happy kids, like not like breaking everything. Like, you know, a lot of times like, kid, kid, watch out that laser. Don't touch the laser. You know, yes. I'm, I'm, in my mind, I think, okay, you know, this is like a $30,000 machine. Don't <laughs> yes. uh, and I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty cool. And they are really what, because I never even thought about home birth. Mm. Never, not even crossed my mind at all. And we had our first baby actually at a Evergreen Hospital in Kirkland. And, and I was like, whoa, okay, maybe maybe I should uh, we should check this out. And I'm like, man. And then we've done a bunch of home births. Like, wow, it's best thing ever. Who 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 wouldn't do this kind of thing? And so it really was those p humans. Mm. Which was so so grow out so much so valuable again in community and, and find people that are doing stuff like well this is cool. And maybe not just push it off because it's different than what you're used to and saying, yes, well, why would somebody do this? And man, they're bearing pretty good fruit. Maybe I'm looking to what, what that's about. Uh, and then that, yeah, I mean, that spills over into, uh, you know, say getting your, getting raw milk from some, from buddies or, uh, you know, making your own yogurt at home or, you know, these things that are kind of seem really interesting. Like, why would you do that? Yes. But, uh, it just kind of op opens your eyes to all these other things that are out there that are not, it's not like this is life and death decisions or anything, but they do make, I feel like just make your life fuller hmm. and, uh, more enjoyable and create, uh, um, it's like if you, if you have a, a home birth or, uh, um, I mean, just getting pregnant, having a baby is, is fantastic. So don't anybody ever think if you had a home, if you had a hot one to hospital, great. If you had, a, had to have a C-section, great. I mean, whatever. There's no, uh, that's, I, yeah, I don't want to get into that too much, but it's like you, um, you know, we've had aw seven off awesome births. Yes. You know, my, my wife's even able to have the twin babies at home, which is kind of wow. wild, but you don't ever want anybody, any mom to think that because, you know, the birth story she had wasn't the birth story she wanted to have that like it's, it's any less it's if you had gave birth to a baby if you you know it's just completely miraculous, miraculous. Yeah. you're the most amazing human on, amazing human on the planet so yes. uh uh but yeah i think to where you're saying as far as you know unconventionalness that it just it does it leaves you okay you know homeschool the kids 100 percent like i wouldn't i couldn't imagine doing something different than homeschooling the kids uh you know not i only, I only see patients three days a week because I don't, I mean, I end up having to go to the office like the other two days, but it's like, I want to have uh, sure you can make more money and do all this kind of stuff. But it's like, I want as much time as possible with my children mm. to be like, man, okay. We're like, you feel like I'm around a lot. Yep. Not that, you know, I'm, I'm just gone all the time. Cause they're there. You, you know, you can be, you can do a lot of successful things, but not, not be present. And then it's like, geez, the kids are gone. So I don't know if that's really came from that, but it's just like, I just don't, I don't want to be overwhelmed by, by work mm. and not, cause I think that's a big part of how am I going to spur health, vitality, bigger, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, relationally in my children. If, if I'm not present, I think your dad actually might've been the one that was sent or one of these, your dad's told me a lot of good, good helping kids grow stuff. Yes. He's good at that. But, um, it was, uh, it could have been a book too. Read a lot of books on <laughs> parenting, but talking about, you know, you need time. It's like, you want those moments with your children. Well, the number one way to get those moments with your children is to have time with your children. Cause you don't know when those moments are going to happen mm. where it's like, well, they, they really need me right now. Are they about to like, you know, share this awesomeness with me right now? It's like, they need time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, f for me often it's like at nighttime, it's like just laying there in the bed with them mm -hmm. and just kind of like, I mean, we've, we've read our, read our Bible, we've prayed, we've, you know, they've read their devotional out loud and stuff like that. And then it's like, okay, you just kind of, you're just kind of there hanging out and all of a sudden they start telling you about some pretty cool stuff yes. or some stuff that's like, whoa, you know, we're at gymnastics and this girl was telling us like, we're from, you know, like monkeys or, you know, it's like, seriously, <laughs> seriously, yeah. it's like, I would have never even known that, yes. you know, if there wasn't, you know, this time to, you know, to be present, uh, which I think that's kind of unconventional generally. Absolutely. And that piece right there is so profound. I mean, you think of really like you said, you want to have these moments with your children of them being transparent, opening up, building, creating memories, um, building trust. And if those moments happen when there's time, mm -hmm. when, when there's time with them, and it is remarkable how I think we it's, we, it's so hard to remember being a kid. It's so hard to remember 
chewing on stuff when you're a kid. You hear something as a kid, and you're like, well, boy, I don't know what that means. Maybe I should bring it up. Maybe I should not bring it up. Mm-hmm. And as grownups, you, you know, with your spouse, you just get used to communicating as an adult, mm-hmm. as, as a grownup. And it's not the same with, with kiddos, I don't think. Oh, you know, sure. They need this space, they need this time. They don't know if something's going to be weird or awkward or mm-hmm. maybe they're going to, they think they might get in trouble if they, if they bring something up. Uh-huh. To be able to create that space for them is so beneficial as a parent. Like you said, that's just, that's unconventional. You, mm-hmm. you might think, oh, so it, it might seem obvious, but it's still unconventional. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy how, yeah, they, <clears throat> excuse me, thanks for going, going down that path because I've found, you know, once you start thinking differently in, in one area, and, and I would agree, you know, I was brought up in an unconventional manner, even um, from a standpoint of being homeschooled, having more, you know, having, being one of 10 children, you mm-hmm. know, um, having a single income family and all these things. It's like, okay, you, if you isolate one of those things and fixate on it, you can become legalistic about it. You mentioned, you know, um, it is funny. There's, there is this, yeah, I don't like using this term because people throw it around so much, but you know, shaming, but like <laughs> yeah. this whole, like, oh, hospital birth or home birth mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. natural or you know, epidural or not. Mm-hmm. And, and you're thinking, boy, I mean, this, let's back up just a second. <laughs> think of the big picture goal, right? You know, you want right. to get a healthy child in the world and that's a miracle, yes. you know, this gift. Um, that doesn't mean that there shouldn't be maybe some goals, you know, mm-hmm. some striving, mm-hmm. some maybe, maybe some options that big picture are, are bent more beneficial mm-hmm. to your overall health and vitality. But I think if you take that mindset into other areas, and this is another thing too, before I keep going is that it's hard. And I'm sure you've learned how to do this in a very effective way is communicating the big picture goal so that people don't shut down. You said this early on mm-hmm. in our conversation, when people feel like they're being attacked for their nutritional choices mm-hmm. for their dietary choices. They get defensive. They say, 100%. Hey, hold on. You know, like you can't tell me what I'm supposed to eat and not eat. Um, and, and this is another thing too, is that you can find, if you want validation on your lifestyle, totally. do you think you can find it? Absolutely. <laughs> you can find a thousand voices. You can uh-huh. find a million voices on the internet yeah. to support you in your current decisions. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so if you feel anything like you're being attacked and you get defensive, you just go to Google, you go to YouTube, you go to anywhere, you go to Instagram and yep. think, see, yep. I like these people are crazy for wanting to not have their children on social media. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I'm fine. Totally. And, and that's just an example, but I go through all these things that you could almost make an idol or you could become legalistic in them, yep. but they might be good things, you mm-hmm. know? And once you start thinking differently in one area and you're open to it, I think then it, it allows you to think differently in other areas. And I'm just going to run off a list. I'm not saying these are your values. Yep. I'm just saying things that I think are d- thinking differently. You mentioned, you know, a bigger family than average. It's like, wait a second. I'm like, what if we had more, what if, what if kids, we really thought kids were a blessing yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. instead of one or two, it's like six, mm-hmm. you guys had seven, you mm-hmm. know, you had, you had twins and you had a home birth mm-hmm. with twins, but then you start going to like, well, what if, what if we were homeschooling? Okay. What if, um, you know, what if we were pursuing like a single income family, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. and you're thinking, well, is that, does it have to be that way? You're thinking, well, it doesn't have to be that way, but what if, you yeah. know, just kind of like, yeah. let's think differently here. Mm-hmm. And the reason I'm saying these things, cause these are unconventional, right? Totally. They're not, they're not what the general public's doing. Um, and then you start going into media. Well, what if our standard for media was a little different than average. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. what if our standard for um, for schooling and education was a little different than what's typical? And it kind of changes your brain, and, and you're thinking, oh boy, this this conversation started with you know buying raw milk. You totally know what I'm totally, saying? Yeah, yeah, like it started yeah. right there, 100%. and then you start flexing that muscle. And I know this is kind of an overused saying, and I think this quote's attributed to Oscar Wilde, but it's everything popular is wrong. You know, <laughs> yeah. and there is an element of sometimes truth to that, where it's mm-hmm. like, okay, look at the masses. And there's going to be comfort there. There's going to be security there because it's always more comfortable in the moment Mm. going with the flow, going with the stream. And I don't want to convolute the straight and narrow path that is Jesus Christ with nutrition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think there are some very similar uh, parallels in principles to think, okay, as Christ, it is a straight and narrow path and he is the way, he is the gate, he is our, our our righteousness. He is everything like that is the narrow way is it's the person of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But then you look at the lifestyle choices and you're thinking, ah, also the general popular decisions are not most beneficial to, to my life. Totally. And I'm curious as to how you can kind of communicate. Is that a journey with each person? You know, because it seems like if you come in and just look at somebody's life, you could cut, if you came into my living room now, if you pointed to anything that was not beneficial to, you know, that you're like, Hey, this isn't a good input. 
I would get defensive probably at first, you know, so how do you walk people over time through that mindset, especially when we're in a culture that's like, just give me the, give me the prescription. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. I want to feel better today. This is the problem. Treat the problem. Yeah. Yeah. How does that conversation start? No, it's definitely, I mean, that's why usually the first bit is like an hour, you know, it's, it really is, uh, usually educating rather than, um, which hey, I don't really like the word education. It's thrown out there so much these days politically, but, uh, you know, it is though it's educating the, the human on what they could be, how they could feel. I mean, for me, if you're coming into my office, you don't want to be there really. Right. Hmm. We t- talk all the time with our front desk girls. Like nobody comes in here truly wanting to come in here. I'm not saying they don't like me. They don't think we're going to help them out. I mean, they're coming for help. Right. Hmm. But nobody goes to a doctor cause they're like, life is the greatest thing ever. I hmm. mean, I'm just feeling amazing. I just, you know, all this awesomeness. So everybody's coming hurting that they're, they're wanting an answer. Unfortunately, most people aren't coming and wanting the answer I'm going to give them initially. They're, hmm. I mean, at some level there, we all want to know, can we have some, some control? It's not like just, I have to be on a pharmaceutical. I have to get the surgery. That's the only way, but who wants to be told, well, I'm going to have, there's a lot of work, everyday decisions, you know, those who, you know, 400,000 decisions I'm making a day, or, you know, you know, I'm going to have to think about what I think about, what I read, you know, what I listen to, what, uh, what food inputs I put in, you know, maybe my, my meal timing, you know, all these things could be shaping whether or not I feel awesome or or don't feel awesome. And like, like I said before, you know, it literally is, I, I try to just go, okay, what's the lowest hanging fruit in your life? You know, that, that would be the thing, the thing that's just, you know, seemingly really easy to, and it's, it's not going to get in your way at all. And maybe, maybe food isn't the thing we're going for out of the gate because that, that can be challenging, but, uh, I'll t- so I had this guy, he's, um, he's not actually a patient. I'm just coaching him, but he was, he was putting 24 packets of Splenda in his coffee every day. Mm. And he has like hour and a half drive to his work, hour and a half, hour and a half drive home. And, uh, you know, he's, he's like the head of this company and he's, he's saying, uh, uh, you know, actually, I want to, I'm not feeling as good as I'd like to feel, you know, I'd like to help kind of thing. It's like, okay, man, well, I, you know, telling him that 24 packs of Splenda a day is not good for him. It really doesn't, didn't do anything for him because he likes these, hmm. like he likes these, you know, I'm doing it because I like it. Like yeah. what's, there's no calories in the Splenda. How could that be affecting me at all? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and so, you know, and so you just, you know, talking through, okay, what, what are the, the detriments? You know, there are, you know, a lot of interesting studies, um, some in, in humans, but tons of animals showing problematic things with putting these artificial sweeteners in your bean. And, you know, you know, what if we just like put some honey in and said, can we, can we try that? Or how about instead of right now we're doing 24, uh, literally is what we did. <laughs> let's, let's go into how will you use 20 throughout the day? Mm. Uh, and you're not sleeping good at night at all. Huh? Well, you're, you've been drinking caffeine all day mm-hmm. and you're like over a thousand milligrams of caffeine a day and you're, you're just getting a caffeine at like, you know, eight o'clock at night to help you, you know, burn that oil a little bit so you can get, you know, a little bit of extra work done. You know, maybe that's getting in the way, uh, and all trying to go after. And I think we can all think about this way when we're trying to change habits is like, what is my end goal? Why am I doing this in the first place? Mm-hmm. If you just tell somebody, Hey, why would you be consuming that? That's crazy. You know, it's terrible for you. 90% of this, that doesn't do anything for us. Right. Mm-hmm. That's like, I mean, people go on a diet, they're feeling amazing. They lost 50 pounds, 99.99% of Americans who that happens to will gain all that back. Wow. We'll go all, you know, the dog returns to his vomit. They'll, 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 they'll get right back in their old p- patterns and, and worse. And it's like, wow. what is that about? You know? So if we, that's where, you know, if you focus on weight, you're, you're destined to gain weight. That's that what's going to happen. So I think it's, uh, it's just, yeah, it's all about basically, you know, this can be like self-help kind of stuff, but it's focused on why, it, why in the world would I, would I go down this route? Yes. Why did I, you show up at my office today? Why do you want me to help you coach? You know, why is that? If we just tell me, you know, what, 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 it's like, I mean, anybody can do that basically. Right. Hmm. There, there's, and, and nobody's getting, not too many people are getting too far unless you're just that right person or I just, here's, here's the outline for being healthy and you just follow it. Exactly. And that, that is, that doesn't usually work out that way. You know, people need to know why they would want to do that. And you kind of like insert those what's into their whys. Mm. And I'll say, okay, and let's start with just one of them. Instead of feeling like you have to overhaul your, your whole life, your whole cupboard, your whole refrigerator. Now I got to make, you know, I was, I wasn't making any emails at home at all. No, you have, and you're telling me I'd make, 
breakfast, lunch, and dinner for my family now. Right. I just don't think that's feasible. That's just not possible. Well, all right. Well, let's just start with like, um, you know, making some overnight oats or, you know, how we just make a big scramble, scramble for the kids in the morning. Yes. You know, let's just start with one thing, but you get that one thing going. There's a, um, seven habits of something do Higgy, I think is the name of the author, but like 2010 book. Anyway, you know, he tells this, uh, this, um, Stephen Covey, seven habits of highly successful no, people. It's, or it's no, not, it's not that one. Okay. He's, it's a little different book, but, uh, he ta talks about this study where they, uh, took a bunch of people and they said, okay, we're gonna have you exercise one day a week. You just pick the time you're going to exercise and barring an atomic warfare, basically you're going to do that one time and 30 minutes. So like 10 30 AM Friday morning, I'm exercising now. I'm not missing that. So for the next six months, this is all we're doing. Don't worry about anything else. Don't try to eat better. Don't try to sleep better. Don't try to read better. Don't try to like love people better. You like, just make sure don't even work out any extra. Don't worry about it. All you're going to do is that 10 30 AM slot. And what they found is when people do that 10, and this, this could be, you know, 2 AM in the morning, if you want it, whatever, you just have to hit whatever time you put on the calendar, that little itty bitty time, you got to make sure you hit it. Six months later, these people doing this, like they would be, uh, one of the things actually they started going to church. Um, but they would, uh, get better sleep. Like they would take, they would take that opportunity. They, they'd be thinking, I'm going to, you know, get to bed earlier. They, they'd be eating, you know, instead of going to fast food so much, they go to fast food, less, less soda pop, more water. They would start reading books instead of watching TV as much. And literally the only thing that they consciously had done was put this thing that essentially 100% of the world population knows is to our benefit, which is physical exertion. They put that in that slot and they just did not miss that time frame. Mm -hmm. And then they, they would exercise like all these others, like subconscious, not like I'm going to willpower myself to do it things they started implementing in their life simply because of making that one itsy bitsy decision. Wow. So, you know, don't, uh, neglect small things or don't overlook, you know, those just getting in a routine, a little habit, a little, just, I'm going to do this one little thing and then don't, don't miss it. Yeah. And I think that that's, I mean, you know, was, whether it's, you know, James clear, um, mm -hmm. was it atomic habits? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and like you said, you say self helpy and it's easy to kind of like, be like, oh, silly, but some of these, the profundities of self help go, it, you know, uh, profundity is off. What does it say? Uh, how's that saying go? Um, yeah. Profundity is often fallen on the shoulders of the obvious or something. It's like, mm -hmm. that's the point of cliches. A lot of times right, right. is that they are extremely effective. <laughs> and when you look at, um, these small decisions and the ramifications over time, I think it really heightens the, the point where so many people are. I know I've been here when you've tried to make changes and you've only seen it as being a failure. That's overwhelming. You come mm -hmm. in, you visit, and you say, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to start with breakfast. And you think, oh, man, I remember when I tried to stop drinking my afternoon coffee. That didn't go well. I can remember when I tried to kick sugar uh -huh. you know, or my New Year's resolution to, to not drink alcohol. I've done yeah, it. Uh -huh. I've tried to stop smoking. Um, and then there's not this track record of success. Totally. Like, I'm not capable of doing it. And yet, if you find something, just like you said, the low-hanging fruit, mm -hmm. then it can build that confidence o o over time. And it starts to have ramifications that really spread out. I, I definitely have seen this in my own life. You know, it's crazy how sleep was just a thorn in my side for the longest time, mm. you know, where it's like, boy, and it felt so out of my control. Right. And mm. I think I even kind of played into that a lot of times, you know, just kind of like, well, yeah. it comes, it's just gonna, it's like the wind it comes and it goes, <laughs> you know, I'll take it when I can get it. Uh -huh. Otherwise I'm going to be, you know, operating on an hour and a half of sleep on these days. And I just mm -hmm. push through. Um, and I would just finally, it's like, I guess got fed up maybe from listening to you or, or, or just kind of being like, I, am I doing, am I actually doing everything? Mm. You know, mm. like that guy with the 24 Splenda is just like, okay, I actually do want something more than what I'm getting right now. Yeah. knowing that why yeah. it's like, okay, what if I actually was strict on no, no coffee after 10 AM? Mm. Like, what if I actually did that? What if I turned all the lights off and didn't look at a screen? Yeah. You know, after 6 PM, you know, what if I, th I thought about when my last meal was, what about my snacks at nighttime? Mm -hmm. What about everything I'm, ex I'm exposing myself to? And it's like, what if I actually got serious? And it's crazy. You're like, Oh, when you feel like you're actually in control of something, it can be really fun. Man, it's so true. It can really be fun. And, and over the last few months, being able to experience consistent quality sleep. Wow. It doesn't mean I'm getting nine hours of sleep, mm -hmm. or I'm still a father. I still have life to live, but if I can count on feeling like, okay, I know that what to do to get good sleep. It's an amazing feeling. Yeah. And yeah. it really is self propelling. We're like, mm -hmm. I want that. I want more of that mm -hmm. in my life. And it comes down to, to knowing that why, and 
I don't think that can be overstated. It's like one of those things that you don't just grab hold of one time in your life. It's like you're constantly revisiting your why. Yeah. And there are things that, again, I know get made fun of for being self-helpy or personal development stuff, but things like pictures, you know, the whole dream board thing. I have a dream. I do that. Like I have to remember why. Uh -huh. I'm not getting my late night snacks and good because it always sounds good. Like it, totally. it always sounds good to me and mm -hmm. it always sounds fun. And then you start realizing, Oh man, when I would watch this show, then that would trigger this habit. And then I'd want to, or when I would drink this, then I'd want to watch this show. And you start realizing the combination here and you're yeah. thinking, boy, yeah. I can really start finding some correlation to, and you know, straight up causation to what, what I'm experiencing <laughs> here, you know, and it's, it's really empowering, but it comes down to knowing that why I know mm -hmm. we're running out of time here, Matt, your, your family's patiently waiting, mm -hmm. which is awesome <laughs> of them. Can we do some like rapid fire things? Sure. And maybe, maybe this isn't what you do as a professional, you know? So just tell me if you're like, I'm not going to answer that question. Uh -huh. Just thoughts. Cause I feel like these are kind of like buzzwords. They're things that I don't have a ton of clarity on and you can say pass and say, you know, or mm -hmm. be like, go read my blog on it or whatever. <laughs> you know, if you want to go in depth, um, let's do like seed oils. Like stay away from them. Is it, I mean, that's something that's hit the mainstream now. Yeah, you know, yeah. This is something you, you've been talking about mm -hmm, for mm -hmm, years mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it hit mainstream. Can you give us like mindset towards that? Yeah, I think the, the main mindset I would give is that seed oils are basically found in all process, pretty much all the processed food, right? The chips, the crackers, the cookies, all that kind of stuff, cereals. And, you know, is it just the seed oil? Is it just the sugar? Uh, probably not. It's a combination of all of them. Uh, but I think the thing about seed oils is, is they don't really give, you know, if you see sunflower oil, safflower oil, canola oil, soybean oil, corn oil, this means seed oils. If you see those on a package, is that like, oh my goodness, I need that package because I see that corn oil in it. Does, do you feel that way at all? No. No, right? <laughs> so if you look at that, if you want, it's like, if I want to get rid of something in my life, it's like, man, you know, that, that is completely mean to me too. I don't, I don't even know what corn oil tastes like. Yep. But when you mix it all together, it, you know, it tastes mm, like something pretty, pretty special, fun. right? Yeah. So if you, if you go about life, say, you know what, I'm going to pass on the vegetable oils, the seed oils kind of thing. Well, then just like completely wipes out you know, like six rows of the grocery store. Yeah. It's like, sweet. I don't have to mess with that anymore. Okay. Which makes life so much easier. Sure. Are they, they're inflammatory. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, it's like a French fry. If you stick olive oil and you f deep fry French and potatoes with it, you're going to end up with something you don't want to eat. Right. I mean, that's, that's not gonna be healthy for you yeah. long term. You're going to mess that oil up and olive oil is, is actually fantastic. It's yes. quite, quite vile for us. Yes. So, uh, so much of it has to do the, uh, I think just the con conglomeration of all of them. Because yeah, like sesame oil in like some Asian dish, that's not causing disease and dysfunction and terribleness, okay. you know, like, yes. or, uh, you know, we can go to, yeah, there's a lot of things, but I would gen generally say you do want to stay away from vegetable oils that are in things because there's a hundred percent chance that they're rancid, that those, those poly, poly, um, saturated fatty acids are no longer in a structure that would support the human being. Got it. Because they're not stable. Yeah. One more thing. Thanks for that. Um, fruit, fruit sugars. You know, I mean, I mentioned s smart sweets and then uh, like mm -hmm. over time you start realizing like, okay, what's happening in my body? Is this different than refined sugar? Is mm -hmm. it, what, mm -hmm. what are the different, are there fruit sugars, uh, sweeteners, honey, whatever that you're like, it's overall perspective on sweets. Is it? Cause I hear two perspectives. Yep. It's like, you know what, what's happening in your body. It's all kind of similar. So just eat what you enjoy and do mm -hmm. it in a moderate way yeah. or get rid of all of it. Or if you're going to do it at all, it's gotta be these fruit sugars. Sure, do you have sure. a, do you have an overall kind of like perspective on that? <clears throat> yeah, I'm definitely, uh, I mean, <clears throat> raw honey. I mean, I have a little bit of raw honey almost every single day, raw honey, like maple syrup, uh, molasses. Yeah, it was fantastic. Okay. Those there's plenty of health benefits in there. I mean, the more we, we refine them or like, see like agave nectar. Yeah. It's pretty refined. Now it is a super high concentrated fructose mm -hmm. food, which you're probably gonna get fatty liver over time. If you keep consuming a bunch of that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I feel, you know, your guys talking about, you know, like fruits terrible for us and you shouldn't eat fruit and the fruit, you know, there's a very popular gentleman out there. The fruit in an apple is the same as or that fructose is the same as, you know, the corn syrup, the, the fructose by itself in this candy bar. It's like, no, that's not, that's not how the human body works. You know, when you get something in its natural matrix, you know, the fructose sitting in its natural matrix, it literally has an entirely different effect, which can be mass feeder benefit. It can make it so your, your insulin levels don't spike your blood sugar doesn't, don't, doesn't spike. So, I mean, if I saw fructose 
the word fructose in an item, I would personally pass on it mm -hmm. because it is taken out of its natural form and it, it is probably problematic. The body's going it doesn't have essentially the components, the resources necessary that are in the piece of fruit to, uh, essentially digest it, assimilate it, and, and kind of store it in an optimal fashion to the liver. So I would stay away from fructose by itself. Mm -hmm. Of course, high fructose corn syrup for sure, but a piece of fruit, I mean, it, it just kind of mind boggling some of the times, you know, the stuff you hear out there about like, okay, you know, every vegetable is bad for you now. Every fruit is bad for you now. Yeah. Um, and it's not like, like I put people on carnivore diets, like patients as a medical intervention mm. and often we take medical interventions to get to a particular end point over a short time frame. Uh, as, oh my goodness, this is what everybody should do now. Cause it worked for this yes. one person right here. So we definitely have to be really careful about that. And of course in the, in the, um, social sphere, you know, people get their thing, they get their following and then they keep just slamming that thing. Right. And then you see, oh, three years later, they're talking about, they're adding this in, you know, yes. five years later, they're adding this in. Now they're literally talking about the exact opposite thing. Yeah. So I would definitely say he, we need to be so careful or cautious and think, you know, really, uh, I mean, I mean, ask a few other people that you, you okay. trust and see, okay, like, should I be going on this crazy food routine and completely changing my, my existence right. for, for this way of living? Right. I, I would say, you know, looking at the, even at looking at the Bible and, you know, foods that were being needed and foods are being talked about. Now it's like even bread. Say okay, how many times do they break bread in the Bible? Exactly. Okay. I'm guessing that wasn't poison, right? <laughs> so there's, um, you know, processing the bread and all that kind of stuff that can be problematic. People are sensitive to different things and, you know, people have addictions to flour, you know, things. But, uh, as a general rule, I say, no, I don't think you're not going to die. That, that's not, you right. don't need to just completely eliminate grains from our life. That is, right. that, that's, that's probably not the best thing for us. Yeah. And that kind of like, I mean, you kind of went into the next question. Thanks for answering that. Um, you know, the carnivore, um, even, and you kind of even went to something else, you know, people ancestral, you know, mm -hmm. living and eating and, and the hunter gatherer um, lifestyle or, sure. or diet. And then you mentioned like, it's so funny how that, be, it, it's such a fun thing for people to talk about, mm -hmm, right? It mm -hmm. becomes a big part of their, their shtick, you know, yeah, yeah, kind of, this yeah. is what I speak to. Then you look to the Bible and they're talking <laughs> about oils, they're talking about fruits and they're mm -hmm. talking about bread and they're talking, and I'm not saying that just because it's describing them eating that in the yeah, Bible yeah. means it's like, Oh, it's great. Sure. But you think of just overall food. Do you have a mindset on stuff like that? Like, okay, do you give any, I guess, value to, you know, ancestral, you know, <clears throat> mm -hmm. diets and living hunter gatherer lifestyle, or just kind of looking at the here and the now and thinking like, okay, let's, let's not, not zero in so much on that. Is there a danger mm -hmm. in zeroing in on any of those things, you know, carnivore or whatever? I think, uh, I mean, they all have some level of truth to it. Okay. I would say that's like, um, Satan in his way. And there's always yes. like, there's some level, there's sliver of truth in here. Yes. Uh, but I know I was just listening to this, uh, podcast when we're driving over here talking about a particular, you know, food routine and, you know, and, they, and as the person's like, well, you know, from an evolutionary point of view, yeah. it's like, okay, once you say that, you know, we don't really know what we're talking about now. Right. Cause our, our foundation is wrecked. Right. Mm. And so, and I think, you know, where did the, as far as we know, like Mesopotamia area, you know, like this, yeah. this very fertile area is where mm. humanity originated, right. From Adam, yes. Adam and Eve and stuff. And so I think, you know, a lot of the hunter gatherer idea is, is, I don't, think it's, I don't, I don't think it's, yeah, it's going to be a lie yes. because people weren't like showing up in ice ages, yes. you know, trying to like pick through and find some, you know, animal in somewhere and, or like, you know, that was the only thing they had. They had to eat the liver of everything and the yes. spleen of everything to survive. Uh, I think there are some, there are some, you know, tribes and stuff where that is a big part of what they do now and, yes. and, and has been for a long time. And there's some of these indigenous people's like, well, they, you know, there's like this tribe in Africa that all they basically consume is like blood from the, the animal and, and raw milk. That's like what they subsist off of. Right. And they live to like, you know, 55 years old and, and they pass away kind of thing. It's like, oh. well, they're, they're probably not getting everything in you, right? Maybe yeah. there's, there's something wrong with that. So there's, um, there's definitely a level of truth there, but I also think, uh, there's, um, yeah, just a lot of man-made things. Like there is all over the place, you know, you, you know, people add all, all, all kinds of things that yes. <laughs> as they go along and yes. Yeah. Man's wisdom can get kind of funny sometimes. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, yeah. With little sprinklings of truth in there. Awesome. Thanks for, thanks for, you know, answering some of those in general, where's, where can people find you? You know, cause you've got so many help, helpful resources, but if people don't live, you know, in Centralia, Washington or in Lewis <laughs> County and they can't, sure. you know, be a patient, you know, what, what, what are ways people can find you, find your resources? Uh, yeah. D R wholeness, W H O L. 
uh, com. It's pretty much where every, everything goes through Great. blogs and videos and, and all that kind of stuff to Great. support health accumulation. Yes. Yeah. And I'm excited. I'll link that all below. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much again. It, you know, the Bible talks about without a vision, the people perish. And I think being able to gain a vision for health mm. can be so helpful and never ceasing to try to get that. Like, and it's, and it's going to look different for each person, but at least having this goal, like, okay, I want vitality. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not inches on your waistline. You know, right. it's not, it's not an appearance thing. Yeah. Um, it, but saying, I want to live a life of vitality and health and vigor with my children, my grandchildren to really see some of those blessings that the Lord does like to give to people. You know, that health, when you look at it, health is something that is an objective blessing in the Bible. Amen. You know, we talk about it like it's this trivial thing. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. God has called health a blessing yeah. and he's blessed people. Mm -hmm. He'll bless people's faithfulness with health Come on, and good health. And you're thinking, why would I not pursue this blessing? Yeah. Why would I not in my own capabilities and abilities pursue this? So thanks for giving up so many awesome mindsets, Dr. Matt. And yeah, can't wait to do this again sometime. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Thank you. Thank you.